Welcome friends to another 40k video. Today we look at what Corvus Corax has been doing in the warp. Amongst those things, he confronts his traitor brother Lorgar in the short story Shadow of the Past by Gav Thorpe. Around Kalta R, stone is broken with chisel and hammer. Slaves are making a place of worship for the word bearers. Human slaves. This place will be called the Benefictor Diabola. The word bearers realize one of their number is missing, and Brother Regana is not the first. Kaltaar, who checks the wards against demons around them, are failing, says that they need more slaves to sacrifice to keep those wards going. But the word bearers are distracted, as are the slaves, by a scream that cuts through the air. Another of the word bearers are dead. They find the body, and this marine was commanding slaves, and the slaves have been left alive, not something a demon would do. Kaltaar wants to know why. The slaves don't seem scared by whatever this marine faced. The marine has had his limbs and then his head removed. One slave, when questioned, says they saw a shadow. One word bearer believes it must be a demon that got through the wards, and they search for what is taking them out. And one of the slaves is injured by a word bearer, but none of the others cry out. The slaves look at something behind Kaltaar, and he and the others are attacked by what looks like a shadow. It struck back, its shadowy form fragmenting, and wing shapes fell on the word bearers. These blades slashed at their armour, limbs were lost, war plate shattered, the word bearers fall back. They hear reports of further attacks, a black pool appearing, and eating one moving through the walls like oil. One word bearer says to fight it like a demon with faith. Kaltaar decides to retreat to the Porcel Bridge and gain the aid of Urizen, another name for Lorgar, and they run into angry slaves and cut them down with fist and blades. And whilst this happens, a dark mass moves around the chamber and an invisible blade punctured the guts off and lifted one word bearer off the ground. Blood sprayed from Mars. Maws embedded in, in the cloud eat at the legionary, snapping his limbs. The marine screamed at his fate. Another word bearer attacked with his chain sword, but a blade of arm removed the head, and the remaining word bearers fled yet again. Kaltaar then risked other demons attacking him by passing out of the wards, and they managed to get to another area the word bearers control. The bearers there are overseeing slaves. Kaltaar is warned here that he led this demon to their lord's abode. Kaltaar sees 17 word bearers have escaped with him, and some who had not made it to this protected hill are already being devoured by demons. Kaltaar's eyes settle on another word bearer who vaults a low wall, chased by slaves, who he fired on, and then the ground beneath the word bearer darkened, like tar bubbling from a pit. Seeping blackness flowed up his legs, swiftly engulfing him to the waist. The legionary fired down into the morass, but his bolts simply disappeared without exploding. The thick blackness continued upwards, rivulets a shadow that snaked along his arms and around his throat. It broke an arm and the bolt fell, then a leg was also shattered. Kaltaar could not help but be glad the vox of this marine was turned off. The shadow demon then took on a human form. Wings flowed from its back. It walked towards him and the others with grim purpose. Word bearer bolts hit the creature's form, but its fury kept burning and its features changed. It became a creature of whiteness with two ebon black eyes. Forks of black lightning leapt from an outstretched hand, rippling through the body of a word bearer, greasy smoke issuing from rents in his war plate. The legionary collapsed. At this, Lorgar emerged. He's told about the demon, but says it's no demon, and then speaks to this creature. He says, Come to me, brother. And the shadow takes on a form Lorgar knows, Corvus Corax, and they speak. Lorgar says his appearance is because he has ascended. Corax says, like always, he's vengeance incarnate and justice delivered. And his appearance is because the father's engineered veneer of humanity has gone. We are of the warp, and they both agree that they have changed. And the demigods 
clash. They blazed with power. Korax seemed a towering storm wreathed in white lightning. The cloud formed of many ravens. Their courting was deafening. The flash of their talons and beaks. The spark of the tempest. Logar was a fireball of burning runes in answer. Claws from the Raven Lord left tears in the rune robes of Logar, tearing his immaterium form. The mace struck an answer back, levelling walls around them. Korax drove speared talons through Logar's throat. When he tried to use his mace again, the iron grip of the Raven Guard Primarch stopped this, and their fight had driven them both into the air, and at this moment their powers drove them in their immaterium forms back to the ground and the word bearers realize this fight means their master's will is all that is holding the portal they need to get away open so they join the fight as they seek to attack korax they see that the impact from the primax has left a crater around them and has given both primax humanoid forms again logger's left shoulder sagged and he transformed his robes into armor korax looking on with the pitiless eyes claws like blades Fire from the Primarch and some of the word bearers hit Korax, splashing Karulian energy across his ornate black warplate. Other shots joined in, and Logas summoned a nimbus of power and threw out a shield of force that lifted Korax from his feet, buckling his wings in the unearthly hurricane. The Raven Lord became a flock once more of fire eyed black birds, but the swell of Logas will continue to hurl the other Primarch's incarnations upwards scattering them to the sky. The Raven Lord brought his body together into one mass, a dark comet. Lorga and the rest began to escape through a portal. Kaltar threw himself through, and his eyes were drawn back to the gate. The Raven flock could not pass through. Korax became human, and Kaltar could see the damage done to him. And Corvus said, I have your scent now, Lorga, growled the Raven Lord, his face contorted with monstrous rage. I will find you, Logar. I will destroy you and every vessel you have filled with your taint. Logar staggered away, and the portal fell dull, leaving only bare stone within its pillars. Safe at last, the word bearers moved to the heart of the tower, and there the doors slammed shut, and a rune burned into the door. It said, Deny fate. Kaltar asked the reason behind this. What does this herald? asked one of the approaching word bearers. We wait for his return, replied Marduk. Until then, the great work must continue. And that, friend, is where I'll end today's video. I must admit, doing this video, this short story that I'd heard about, got me very excited to do some further videos on the Raven Guard, particularly looking at the origins of Corvus Corax, and also what the Raven Guard were like before and after, what his influence on them is. And strangely enough, this video actually came from a conversation I was having with a friend of mine. We're trying to remember the names of some of the Primarchs. I think we're discussing which ones should return. And my friend kept referring to this Primarch, kept calling him the Batman Primarch. And I laughed at him and thought it was rather silly, but actually reading this, this creature appearing from the darkness and taking away the word bearers one by one very much reminds me of Batman. Particularly, I think, the first movie by Christopher Nolan. Another little rambly origin of the video at the end, it's where I will finish things off for today.